Hi and welcome to this video. In this one, we are going to talk about React's virtual DOM. So hit that subscribe button and let's get started. React's virtual DOM is React's way of updating our UI or our website. And why would React need to do it? Because we want to create dynamic websites. We want to show the changes that the user brings. We want to show that changes or those changes on the website. React's virtual DOM, what it does is it's going to take a look at where the update occurs and it's going to update only that part. So we don't update the, the text. We just update the number, right? And um, the rest of the code, I'm sure, is very, very familiar for you. That's example number one. Example number two, let's save that. Let's come right here. So example example number two, what we want to do is we want to conditionally render something. Now, the thing that we want to render is this paragraph. So if we click on this button, we want to toggle the display of this paragraph. So if I click on it, it's going to go away. If I click on it again, it's going to come back. Now, keep in mind, the idea behind this is that even if we have some conditional logic in our application, that is still going to trigger a re-render of our application, all right? Because at any point in time, we might bring changes to the UI. And we, when we bring changes, that um, basically necessitates a re-render, right? And what is render? And what is re-render? Render is whenever we put something on our website. Whenever you, sh you see something on the website, that's render. And when you see that change, that's re-render, right? That's like in simple terms. That's example number two. Um, let's jump into example number three. Now, example number three highlights the diffing mechanism. The diffing mechanism is an important mechanism in React where one, once our component renders for the first time, it is called mounting, right? Whenever you go to a website the first time, that's called mounting. So all the components mount to the page, you see everything, all right? Then React creates a virtual DOM, right? And then when we break, bring some changes to the UI, what kind of changes? For example, here I have a list of apple, banana, and cherry. I bring some change in here. And what could that change be? When I click on, an, on this add item, I add a new item. I could keep clicking and I could be adding new items. So every time I click, I bring changes to the UI, right? And every time I bring a change, the React, uh, React is going to create a new virtual DOM, right? And that new virtual DOM, let me just refresh the page. So when I click once, uh, you can see, uh, let me refresh this once again. So here, React created one virtual DOM. When I, add, when I add this item, new item, React creates another, another virtual DOM. So now there are two virtual DOMs. Now, creation of these DOMs is extremely simple for React because they're just JavaScript objects. So it's extremely fast and performant. Now, we have two DOMs. One is old, one is new. React is going to compare these two DOMs in order to understand what has changed in the UI. And this process is called the diffing mechanism or the diff mechanism, right? This comparison of two virtual DOMs, the new one with the old one, in order to um, basically understand or distinguish the differences between the new one and the old one. This is called the diffing mechanism. And as far as our code is concerned, we have our use state. Now, for the use state, we always need some initial value where we have this object. Now, I'm sure you can understand the JSX part. We have gone over this a lot in our uh, in the first video of this uh, tutorial series. Uh, but still, we have like a UL where we dynamically render elements depending on however many they are, right? And they come from items. Uh, now, you need what one thing, one important thing you need to keep in mind with use state is whenever you provide a default value, that is going to be the initial value for this items for whatever the first uh, item within this array is. So this is, whoops. 
the first uh, value for this items and we iterate over that and each time we create an LI and the I, the text or the content of the LI comes from the name of this object, all right? Now, when it comes to handle item, uh, uh, handle add item, here we have set items. Now, here we are spreading the items. We are spreading the original items. Now, whenever you use uh, the spread operator, you need to keep in mind you're creating actually a new array, and that's something that we want to do in React. We don't want to manipulate the original one. We want to create a new one, and that's why we are using map, because map creates a new array as well. So you need to keep this in mind as well. So we get all the previous ones, and then if we have a new one, what is the text for that new one? The text is, let me just collapse that. So we get all the previous arrays right here, uh, previous array items right there. All right, let me just make this a little bit uh, bolder. Uh, we get all of that right there. And then once we have new items, what do we want to do with the new items? For the new items, we want to add a text that is called new item. And the ID, now remember, items, they need IDs. The ID is just going to be an increment of the previous ID, like four or five, whatever. So this is how this logic works, right? Let's jump into our example number four. I do want to talk about uh, a little bit of logic as well, because uh, understanding the logic is extremely important in order to understand how React works, right? So what do we have here? Here we are going to talk about updating complex state. Let's go over the example first. Now, if we take a look at this, this, this looks a lot like our previous example with what with one minor change. And that change comes right here, where we whenever we want to update, then uh, whenever we want to create a new LI or new user, we actually create that dynamically as well. So why is this complex? Like, it's not actually complex, but it is more complex than the previous one. And why is that? You could think about it for like two, three seconds, pause the video and think about it. But the reason that this is a little bit more complex than the previous one is that whenever I click on this add user, you can see not only we are updating the ID for that specific item, we're also going to take a look at how we can increment this number. Now, incrementing this number is easy, but this means that the new version of virtual DOM versus the old one now has two changes instead of one. Now, we add an ID and then we create that user number dynamically as well. Right. As opposed to the pr previous one where we just had like the ID. And if you keep clicking on it, you can see the logic logic working. Right. Every time we add a new item and that uh, necessitates a re-render because we are bringing change into the UI. And with every re-render, React does these processes. Don't worry, I'm going to give you an overview of all of that after the sixth example. In this one, what we're going to talk about is really understand reconciliation. It's, it's, it's extremely important for you to understand how React works. So in this example, what we have is if we toggle this view, it's going to change the component. We have component A, component B, and we can toggle between these two components. Now, what is reconciliation? So we talked about mounting creation of the virtual DOM, the original virtual DOM, the first one, then bringing some changes into the UI, then creating a new DOM, a new virtual DOM, and then comparing these two and the comparison of the old and the previous DOM that was diffing, right? Now, what does React do after React uh, understands, okay, which part of the UI have changed? React updates the real DOM with the changes from the virtual DOM. And this process is called reconciliation. All right, and that is it for this example. Let's talk about our final example, which is example number six. Um, this is actually a very interesting one. And in here, we're going to talk about dynamic list rendering with conditional styling. 
So what do we have? First, let's take a look at that in the browser. I'm going to really zoom in. So we have five tasks. We don't have the ability to add more tasks, but we have another ability. That ability is whenever you click on any of these tasks, you could mark it as complete or mark it as incomplete. So task one is complete, task two, task three, task four is now incomplete, it is complete, it is complete, all five of them. But if I reload the page, an interesting thing happens. Task two and task four are by default completed. So here is our task number two, for which the completed status by default is set to true. And here is our task number four, which is the same thing. Now, going over the logic, it's extremely simple. What we want to do is we want to basically create these five tasks. We have five IDs for five different tasks. We have uh, the text and then we have the status. This is going to be passed to the state variable as the initial value. So the state variable now holds an array of five objects, five objects as the array items. Now here, what we do is we grab that array, we iterate over it, and in each iteration, we create an ally. The ally has one, two, three props, right? The first prop is key where we get that from task.id. And you might be thinking, how is that possible? So whenever we grab any item from this array, what is that item? That item is an object. And we could grab the object properties using the dot notation. That comes from JavaScript, remember? So task.id is going to grab the ID. Then we have the style for that. So the style is an inline style. You are familiar with this. In real world, we're not going to do this. This is just for this example, right? We apply this style. So we apply a text decoration if the task is completed, right? If the task is completed, we apply that text decoration. Otherwise, we don't do anything. It's a simple ternary. And you are going to see this a lot when you're working with props because ternary, you could just write it in line. That's why it was created. That's the idea of ternary, to just write it in line. And on click, we run the toggle completion uh, function, all right? We run that. Now, why do we run it as opposed to the previous examples just calling it? Because this now requires an argument. Now, whenever you need to provide an argument to a method or a function in JavaScript, you need to have parentheses. You can't just reference the function and provide the argument there. You need to have parentheses. And whenever we want to run a function, we need to run it when the click happens. Now, this is very important. We want to run this function when we click on an item, not when we mount the component. And that's what this arrow function does right here. It's, it makes sure we run the toggle completion whenever we say whenever we we say on click whenever we click we run it and then the text text comes from task text right so this is the logic now giving you an entire overview of how uh, this works I am going to try to do it some here and some in the uh, during the editing of this video. So right here, I am going to create a box, uh, not this one. Um, let me redo this or undo this. Let's create a bit uh, thicker. So the first thing that React does is React mounts our component. And I'm going to keep that right here. So this is the mounting phase. The mounting is the first time that we basically go to that website. Like if you refresh, that's the first mount. Okay, so that is so far clear, right? Now, after that, what React does is, after that, React is going to, uh, well, I shouldn't come right here. That's, I should go somewhere else. So after that, React is going to create, let me, where should I put this? Here is good. React is going to create the very first virtual DOM. So right there. All right. So mounting virtual DOM. 
And after React created the virtual DOM, we might bring some changes to the UI. These changes could be in the form of these changes could be in the form of, well, it doesn't come from there. It comes from here. So initial mount, create, uh, React creates that virtual DOM. We bring some changes to the UI. And then after we bring those changes, what does React do? React creates another virtual DOM. And you might be thinking, okay, isn't this like too complicated? No, it isn't. It's very simple and it is very straightforward. So based on our changes, React creates a different virtual DOM. And then through the process, which is called diffing, React compares the, virtual, the new virtual DOM with the old virtual DOM. And it finds the changes that the user has brought. And whenever it found the changes, it does the final thing. Whenever it found the changes, it updates the UI with the changes found, right? So this process right here, this is called uh, diffing. And whenever, the, whenever React updates the UI with the changes, that's called reconciliation. And then we see the changes. So React updates the, the uh, real DOM with the virtual DOM with the changes that it found during the process of diffing. Now, you might be thinking like, isn't it easier to go like in a straight line? Like, isn't it easier to go, um, to go, let me just give it a different color. So isn't it easier to just go straight away, like straight line instead of like going back and forth? Well, it's not that simple because updating the real DOM is a very, very inefficient and slow process. So when you have like a big website, you don't want to change the entire website, re-render the entire website. You only want to re-render certain parts of that website. Now, when you think of it like this, it makes sense, doesn't it? Congratulations, you just mastered how React works. So that is going to be it for this video. And see you in the next one.